Hey guys, my name is Andrew. Thank you for so much for watching my YouTube channel. Um, hopefully you guys like it. You made it this far, so hopefully we can make it through the whole video. Uh, I've been a diehard Dolphins fan since 1999. Uh, 20 years haven't been great. I'll be 21 actually in, on this 26th. So almost 21 years hasn't been the best of luck for me. Um, hopefully it's looking looking better for the future. I know we're all excited, so we're gonna get right to this. Uh, just a little rundown of what I'll be doing. So it'll be, I'll be recapping on either, normally like a Tuesday or Wednesday, or maybe even on a Monday. I'm not gonna wait as long as today on Thursday, um, but I'll be recapping the previous game. So for this instance, it'll be the Dolphins and the Patriots. And then I will also be previewing our future opponent, um, so this instance, the Bills and how they did against the Jets last week. So we're going to get right to it. I have a bunch of stuff I'm ready to share um, and a couple little fun things I'm going to be talking about. So stay tuned. All right. So we're going to start with the uh, recap of the Dolphins versus Patriots week one game Sunday at uh, one o'clock. Um, it was rough on the defense. You know, they had over 200 rushing yards. Cam Newton had 15 completions. He had 15 rushes. Um, 75 rushing yards with two rushing touchdowns. Um, it was a very balanced game by Cam Newton, and I truly am not going to blame the coaching staff entirely. I don't think they knew exactly how to prepare for a Ron Rivera Cam Newton offense or a Bill Belichick Tom Brady offense. And of course, Belichick's mastermind self combined the two and made it virtually impossible to stop. You know, there was very uh, safe plays. No risky throws into double coverage, uh, none of that. So it was turnovers were not there. You know, we had the one forced fumble by Jerome Baker. But other than that, they really just controlled the whole the whole game. Uh, time management, running the ball, even throwing the ball over the middle, they controlled it. Um, but besides all that, you know, it was tough to watch. I know we all were chanting for Tua to come in. Um, but there were some highlights. So we have Miles Gaskin had a good game. He had nine rushes for 40 yards. And he also attributed four catches for 26 yards. So he had about 66 yards on 13 touches, which is a lot more productive than we thought he would be. Uh, Matt Breida had five rushes for 22 yards. And then Jordan Howard had the disappointing eight rushes for seven yards. I know that he had those goal line stands, three, I think three of them. So that did lower his yards per carry, and then he eventually got the touchdown with that. Aside from the rushing stats, Devontae Parker had four catches for 47 yards. He looked like he was on track for another big game, considering he didn't even play, I don't even think, halfway through the second quarter. He had 47 yards, uh, four catches on four attempts as well. Um, so he looked like he was going to be on track for something big, and then, of course, he got hurt again. And the whole offense changed. It was just everyone was blanketed. Preston Williams could not get open. He was blanketed. And, I mean, other than that, the Dolphins have a very limited amount of weapons. Jakeem Grant, I mean, he had three catches for 25 yards. And I figured, you know, I thought Jakeem Grant was going to have a great season. And, you know, it's still week one, so we'll see. But without Devontae out there, it just it's it's almost too easy for defenses to guard our receivers. You know, Preston Williams... Jakeem Grant, we don't have Albert Wilson. Isaiah Ford didn't do much. So it's it's really between Williams, Grant, and Ford, and they are not really established receivers in the NFL. So it's it's going to be tough on our offense, no matter who our quarterback is, to uh, gain momentum with that receiving core. Aside from the receiving, uh, there were some bright spots. So Austin Jackson played very well. Robert Hunt played very well. And Brandon Jones played very well. Uh, those three rookies, what was that, uh, two first-round picks, and then Brennan Jones. Brennan Jones had nine tackles. And then my way of judging if an offensive lineman plays well is if you don't hear their name called, chances are they're not doing anything bad. Uh, they didn't give up – Austin Jackson didn't give up a sack. He didn't get any penalties, no false starts, no holding. So I was okay with his debut. It was, uh, it was good to see. Uh, Fitzpatrick didn't look like he was a wild chicken running with his head cut off like he did a lot last season. Looked like he had some more time to throw. Um, but besides that, we'll move on to Fitz. So it was it was tough. It was tough to watch Fitzpatrick, you know. He went 20 of 30, he had 191 passing yards, zero touchdowns, and three interceptions. I mean, one of those interceptions, Preston Williams slipped. It was tight coverage. I wouldn't have thrown the ball there anyways. Uh, one of them was bad, threw it right to the defender, and then the other one was a blatant pass interference call, but nonetheless... You threw it into double coverage. 
you know, maybe Jacecki makes the play if he doesn't get held, but you know, it doesn't matter. There's no way of knowing. Um, it almost looked like his arm strength is non-existent. It seems like he's on a simple 10-yard out route. He's trying to force all his strength into throwing the ball and trying to get it there. Uh, but that comes with timing. So I don't have a problem with that. If he's good with the timing of the routes, I don't care about arm strength, truly. Uh, accuracy has always been more important. But other than that, the last person I can shout out is Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker played very well. He had 16 tackles, one sack, and a forced fumble uh, on Nikhil Harry at like the half-yard line where it ended up being a touchback in our ball. That was a big momentum shift when that happened. I thought, okay, well, we might have a chance to come back. Unfortunately, the offense stalled, and that never came to be true. So other than that, it was a, it was a tough game. 21-11 was the final score. Feasibly, it could have been 21-18 if maybe we get the flag called at the end of the game and we're at the one-yard line and we rush the ball in. Looks a lot. But even if it was 21-18, it would look a lot closer than it really was. The Patriots dominated the whole game, their offense, defense, and all that. So it was tough to watch. But like I said, it's week one. We're going to give us some time. We're not going to stress about this. Patriots always have had a tough team, always. And, you know, their coaching staff doesn't let up. They know what they're doing. So I don't. I'm not, I'm not worried about week one. You're never as good as your first week. You're never as bad as your first week. So we'll see what happens against Buffalo. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is such the Buffalo Bills, how they did against the Jets and how they'll match up with the Dolphins come Sunday. All right. So the Bills defeated the Jets week one, 27 to 17. Josh Allen padded his stats, absolutely filled every stat column board there is. He had 33 completions out of 46 attempts. 312 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. He had 14 rushes for 57 yards, a touchdown on the ground, and two lost fumbles. Uh, the two lost fumbles are really, in my opinion, as quarterback, they're inexcusable. Um, unless you're getting strip sacked, that's always tough to blindside, and that's tough. But when you're running the ball and you fumble as a quarterback, there's no excuse. You should be sliding or going out of bounds. I know Josh Allen is kind of like Cam Newton, where they're going to do everything to make someone miss. And sometimes the two fumbles can uh, happen because of that. But other than that, the Jets held the Bills to some pretty good, pretty good on def uh, rushing defense. They had Singletary had nine rushes for 30 yards, which isn't good. And then Moss had nine rushes for 11 yards. So it looked like the Jets run defense was pretty good. Uh, Stephon Diggs was their leader in receiving eight catches for 86 yards. Um, Josh Allen threw to a lot of people. He, I mean, he spread it out. John Brown had six catches. Cole Beasley had four catches. Devin Singletary had five catches. Uh, Zach Moss had three catches. Gabe Davis, who's actually from my hometown, played against my rival, played for my rival high school. Uh, I think he had two catches. So he distributed the ball very well across the board. Um, you know, the Bills are always a tough team. They always are pride themselves on their defense. They have a top two corner. Stephon Gilmore's number one, but I'm going to put Trey White at two. Um, it's always tough when we play the Bills because they pride themselves on defense, you know. And, you, I mean, that shows. Sam Darnold couldn't get anything going. The Jets' rushing game was stagnant at best. Frank Gore had 24 rushing yards. Bell had 14 rushing yards. Um, the only highlight I can see that the Jets had was Jamison Crowder had seven catches. For 115 yards and a touchdown and I love Jamison Crowder I think he's a great receiver but in reality he is really all Sam Darnold has Le'Veon Bell took a step back last season and looks like he's going to be taking another step back now but as us Dolphins fans would say that is the Adam Gase effect so anyways the Bills defeated the Jets 27-17 um it's going to be tough for us this coming week but we're going to kind of break down what's what we need to do to win and how we can defeat the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. So we're going to get right to that. And then I have a little surprise coming, something that's going to be a weekly thing, a little segment I'm going to be doing. All right, so this is going to be something I call Tua Talks. Tua Talks, T-U-A-T-A-L-K-S, Tua Talks. All right, so it speaks for itself. I'm going to be talking about Tua, what he didn't do, what he did, what he did good, what he did bad, whatever. Tua Talks, like maybe two minutes of Tua. So a lot of Dolphins fans are hoping and asking that Tua be thrown in against Buffalo. Some of you wanted him to be put in against New England. And, you know, it, it was it, watching the game, everyone probably wanted him to be put in because it was tough to watch. But in reality, when you think about it, 
That is a terrible idea. Terrible idea. You, we all saw what happened last season with the Dolphins. It took them about eight or nine weeks to get their first win. Now, granted, they look a lot better at the beginning of this season than they did at the beginning of last season. So I give them credit for that. But you do not want to throw Tua out there, as my friend Randy Seidler, diehard Dolphins fan, would say. You don't want to throw Tua to the wolves, right? You want Tua to have a formidable team where he can win, compete, and look good. Three things. Win. If he doesn't win, compete. If he doesn't compete, at least look good, right? You don't want to throw him out there us get blown out 35 to 7 and him struggle his self-confidence get destroyed and then even at that risk him getting hurt again the o-line looked good but you want the o-line to be a formidable unit consistently you know the patriots don't don't pride themselves on pass rush they pride themselves on run stopping and pass defense if you play a tough play a tough pass rush team it might look different so bottom line is you want to get all the mishaps all the tiny little mistakes you want to make the team a unit and then that's when you put Tua in. There's no timetable. There's no, oh, uh, week seven, week nine, week four. The coaching staff knows this. They know, okay, once we look like we can handle a team with a good quarterback and win games is when we will put Tua in. There's no rush, guys. I, I just like anybody else was watching the game, and when I saw him on the sideline, it was, I got a little sense of relief because I was like, all right. Future's coming. It's not our time yet, but it'll be it'll be soon. So let's wait. Let's hold our horses, and we'll see what the coaching staff does with Tua. I'm excited. Um, I think they're gonna play this perfectly. They're not gonna rush him out there. I am not rushing Tua out there either. I'll give uh, I'll give it three or four more weeks of bad bad play, and then maybe I'll say, uh, okay, it's time for Tua. But as of right now, Tua is a no go. Let him learn. Let him heal. He didn't have any rookie mini camps. He didn't have preseason, and I, you know, let him figure it out on the sidelines before he gets thrown in. So that's my take for Tua. We're gonna keep this going. The last thing I want to do is uh, our three ways to win, three ways to defeat the Buffalo Bills, and then I'm gonna give my final score prediction of how it's gonna look on Sunday. All right. So our three ways to win. One. Oh, I almost flicked y'all off. One. Win the trenches. All right, offense and defense, run block, pass block, run stop, and pass rush, really, in reality. We do all those four things, we can defeat the Buffalo Bills. Not worried about anything else besides the Bills winning the battle of the trenches, right? Number two, contain the quarterback. They didn't do well against Cam Newton containing the quarterback. Hopefully they learned their lesson because Josh Allen can run just as well as Cam Newton just about now. Um, if Josh Allen gets an open space, he's dangerous. And he rolls out of the pocket, he's dangerous. I'm not worried about Josh Allen in the pocket. I'm not worried about Josh Allen testing our corners and throwing to Stephon Diggs and John Brown. Uh, I think our corners can match up with them. But it's once Josh Allen starts improvising and making plays on the run is where we would get in trouble, as we saw with Cam. And my third way for the Dolphins to defeat the Buffalo Bills on Sunday is Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker is a huge piece of this team. We can all agree that he is by far the best player on the team right now. No disrespect to Xavier Howard, no disrespect to Byron Jones, but as far as producing results from last season and coming into this season, Devontae Parker is the best Dolphin. Um, without him, like I already said, without him on the field, the whole offense changes. Um, there's not really anyone you can throw too deep. Preston Williams can win some jump balls, but he's not Devontae Parker. And truly at the beginning of the season, I thought Preston Williams might pass Devontae as the number one. And then when you look at how he matched up against Gilmore and he was absolutely blanketed, could not get open, could not get any space, uh, kind of showed that Devontae was a more established receiver and just better, as of, as of right now, better. Um, so win the trenches, contain the quarterback, Devontae Parker. Only way we can beat the Buffalo Bills is if those three things happen. Other than that, I'm not worried about our secondary. Our run game will get it going. We win the trenches. Our run game gets going with uh, running lanes. So not too worried about anything else besides the trenches and the up front containing the quarterback. Um, so now my final score prediction for Sunday. The Buffalo Bills against the Miami Dolphins. The Buffalo Bills will win 35-14. to 14. And I know that's, that's a blowout. That is. And 
told you, I'm not going to be biased on this. This is my truly honest. What I think is going to happen is 34-14. Um, I think the offense doesn't get it going yet. You know, maybe if Devontae plays, he catches a touchdown, and maybe Rita or Howard run a touchdown in. But I don't see us scoring more than 14 points on that defense. And then I just think Josh Allen in the running game, they saw what the Pats did and how the Pats beat us. They're going to do the same exact thing. They're going to bring the same exact formula and playbooks. And it's, it's going to be tough. Now, if the Dolphins step up their run defense, maybe Shaq Lawson makes an appearance. Maybe Kyle Van Noy makes an appearance. Maybe Alandon Roberts makes an appearance. Maybe it's a little bit different. But as of right now, if I had to put my money on it, 35-14, Bills over Dolphins. All right, guys. So I am all done here. This is my first time trying to do this um i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any dolphins fans that think you can give me some support please please tag them uh let them know about me truly i'm just doing this on my free time i do study sports business management so i figured i could do something for fun uh that could kind of benefit me and expand my knowledge as well um if you have any questions any ideas for me to do any comments anything anything drop them down below drop them down below and we're going to be back here next week uh, I'm going to try and get it done on Tuesday. Really just depends on my work and school schedule, but I'm going to try and do them every Tuesday and we'll go from there. So once again, guys, I thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it and go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.